Hi, I'm Spiders, and this is part 2 of my full combo guide. Last video, I covered the more fundamental aspects needed to master combos on a beginner or intermediate level, while this video will be covering more advanced aspects needed to achieve what I believe to be expert level combo mastery among the best worldwide. Anyway, this video will probably be the most advanced video I've made yet, so I might sound a little more nerd emoji than usual, but I'm sure some of you might be interested in the finer details or are just curious about what it takes to achieve mastery over an aspect of PvP at a level that is really among the best in the world. Now, while I can't say I've achieved that myself, I do believe that I understand the theory behind it. So let's get into it. This section will be broken down to four core aspects of expert level combos that I've decided to highlight. The first of which is advanced hit stun. I mentioned hit stun in the previous section, but the best players in the world at combos really do know to take advantage of the specific aspects of hit stun, which change certain interactions. Being able to fully utilize hit stun to an advanced level requires heavy attention to specific timings and mechanics of hit stun, often combined with other mechanics mentioned earlier. Now there are a wide variety of situations where using specific hit stun interactions matter a lot. Now to clarify what I mean by this, I'll give a specific example where advanced hit stun knowledge is required to complete a combo. Now for this example, first you M1 and apply hit stun. But you also have to predict that your M1 will not get parried and move stack a mantra in order to get the mantra out as quickly as possible. This mantra that you move stack also has to be a very quick mantra, such as Exhaustion Strike, Astral Wind, or Rapid Slashes. This is really important for this combo, it has to be a quick mantra. And then you mantra faint it. The reason you do this is in order to get your opponent to waste their parry as soon as possible after you M1. That way you can take advantage of your opponent's block, parry, and dodge not being available during the small duration of hit stun. Then after that you can M1 and extend however you like. Now this might not seem like too much, but in the span of just a couple seconds, you must 1. Land in M1, 2. Predict that your M1 will land, 3. Move stack a mantra, which also must be a very fast mantra, otherwise your opponent will parry too late and this combo won't be possible. And then 4. Mantra fade extremely quickly, predicting your opponent will try to parry it, and also has their parry available, since that's the whole point of that part of the combo, being able to bait their parry and extend off the hit stun. Finally, you must M1 as soon as possible before the hit stun frames end, and then extend off of that. In addition to that, you also must use a fast enough swing speed weapon, since this combo is literally impossible with a heavy weapon pretty much, since the hit stun frames are really close, and it barely lasts long enough to extend off of this interaction. So yeah, you pretty much either must have a light weapon or a very fast medium weapon in order to do this effectively, and it gets harder the slower swing speed you have. So especially if you're on medium weapon, this gets really difficult at times. This is just one small sequence taking advantage of advanced hit stun, but as you can see, a lot of thought and detail goes into this one short combo. And being able to process this in the span of like, what, 2 seconds or so? is really what separates the best from someone who's like intermediate level. And yeah, it goes without saying, at a high level, this is a somewhat common usage of advanced hit stun, but I've never seen anyone outside of top 250 ever do this, at least in my region, and really even probably outside of top 100 too, so this is something really complex and difficult to do. And yeah, that was just one example of how to absolutely maximize hit stun potential, so yeah, just knowing that one sequence won't be enough. Now, my point with this example was not to prove that all top channel 200 IQ or anything, because that is definitely not true. Instead, really top players have practiced over and over again until these mechanics have become ingrained into them, allowing for this kind of quick processing to come naturally. I would also like to emphasize that this entire combo relies on taking the maximum advantage from the first application of hit stun possible, and extending off of the system by applying more hit stun is what makes this entire combo work. So just having mastery over core aspects of PvP can really take you super far in this game. Now that was kind of a lot, but the second aspect of the expert level combos I'd like to cover is predicting parries. Normally, you have two ways to escape combos, which is just venting or using your parries. You can't always really do much about venting, so being able to predict parries when your opponent isn't able to vent or decides not to is a really good way to extend your combos. By being able to predict parries, you can think of countermeasures, such as using a guard break when your opponent parries, or making sure not to attack during that time so you can take advantage of hits done, kind of like what was used in the previous combo mentioned. Either way though, I consider predicting parries an expert level skill. Since in order to predict parries, you have to not only really precisely know the timing of parries and be able to predict when your opponent will parry from that, you also need to know how to punish your opponent for that, which is something pretty difficult to do for most players. So that is why I would consider predicting parries to be an expert level aspect of combos. Now the third section for expert level combos, and that is slightly related to the last one, is being able to adapt and predict your opponent's defensive mistakes. Now being able to predict parries is a part of this, but I'd say it's a little bit more complex than that in other situations as well. For example, a really common usage where you have to adapt and predict your opponent's defensive mistakes is following up from Rising Wind. Here you can see a lot of the time after using Rising Wind, I just go for a very quick M1 in order to make sure that my opponent can't react in time and try and extend off of that. But of course, if you're finding good players, they're not just gonna let you do that over and over and over again. Eventually they're gonna learn that you're always doing the same thing after Rising Wind. And once that happens, it's time that you change as well. If I notice my opponent starts parrying my M1 after Rising Wind, I'll instead stop going for an instant M1 and try and instead delay it a little bit and then go behind the block. Because most of the time when they're doing that, they can't really see you after Rising Wind, which means that they're predicting parrying, and probably just going to block right after. So to counteract that, I'll try and go behind their block, like you can see here. Now that was just one example that I can show because I play on Gale, but obviously for other tombs this can be other situations like that as well. For example, take a look at this situation. 
The first time my opponent tries using this combo, I get hit by their Neve crit after they use Ice Eruption, and consequently get Guard Broken and Punished from that. And so the next time I realize the sequence is happening, I prepare myself to parry their Neve crit instead of immediately trying to parry after being hit by Ice Eruption. And this adaptation protects me from being Guard Broken, and saves me from taking a lot of damage. Now consequently, my opponent can counteract this adaptation, since because I'm priming myself to parry later than usual, if they go for a quick attack, they can punish me for that, and sort of counter adapt to my adaptation to punish me which I believe they might have done later in the fight. So as you can see, the mind games get pretty complex when there's two good players fighting, and that's where things get really tricky. So this is definitely an expert level skill, I'd say. Being able to adapt or predict your opponent's actions during combos. And the fourth and final aspect of expert level combos that I like to mention is using situation-specific combos where you adapt depending on your cooldowns, positioning, your opponent's mistakes, etc, all of that. Now this sort of combines everything together and, you, and utilizes your specific situation to create a combo. There's no real pattern to this and you just kinda gotta work with what you have, but here I'll give you an example. Here in this situation I'm finding a really good player in my region, and that's important to know for what happens next. So a lot of the time since I play Gale, people begin adapting to my feints. Since a lot of the time after pairing, I'll feint something like Gale Lunge, instead of actually using it. So since this guy's a top player, he realizes this, and instead primes himself to not parry my Gale Lunge. Instead, just not react to what's to not fall for my feint. But instead, since I know this, I decided to go with a random full Gale launch, which really wouldn't make as much sense in the situation since normally, obviously, he'd just parry it and will be worthless. And it would just give him free offensive advantage again. So instead, I go through with a full Gale launch randomly here. And because of this, he realizes a fraction of a second too late that I'm actually going to go fully through with this Gale launch. And because of that, he misses his parry here and I'm able to extend off my Gale launch with two free M1s during the hit stun. Now, because I'm on a medium weapon, specifically the Curve Blade of Winds, I know that I'm able to get two M1s in during hit stun before my opponent's parries back up. So right after the second M1, instead of doing another M1, I go with Rising Wind. Since Rising Wind is a really good extender, and I know that he probably won't be able to parry it, since Rising Wind is really hard to parry off of M1. So this fully maximizes the damage that I'm able to get during hit stun before his parry is back off cooldown. And then after that Rising Wind, I decided to go with a Wind Gun, and admittedly, I did not predict at this point that he was going to miss his parry. Like I said, I haven't fully mastered any of this stuff yet, so it gets pretty complex. But after that, I follow up with an Astral Wind, which I believe at the time, Astral Wind was actually bugged, so it kind of goes through block. And obviously, since his parry is off cooldown, and he just got hit, he's probably not going to roll in the situation, so... That takes away of a situational bug that happened to be there at the moment, I guess. Although that bug is gone now, so don't even worry about that, I guess. But anyway, the point of that is that there are a huge variety of random situations you can find yourself in, and being able to adapt perfectly to the situation can be super beneficial, especially against better players as you go on. Since in order to break through some really strong defenses, you have to change the way you play in order to counteract your opponent. Anyway, that was the expert section for combos. Like I said, this stuff gets really complex, so honestly, if you're a newer player, I'd probably recommend focusing on the intermediate and beginner sections before you try mastering the stuff in this section, which I went over in the last video in the series, which I recommend checking out too if you haven't already. But if you get a good opportunity to practice the stuff mentioned in this video, that practice can be super valuable as this stuff is really powerful, and using these aspects of combos mentioned in this video can be really good against pretty much every player in the game. This video did end up being a little bit longer than I expected it to, but I do hope the extra detail was helpful for some of you. Thanks for watching and like and subscribe for more top content. See you in the next one.